Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. I am back with another garden video. So, today is the beginning of the season. I'm going to be showing you my March 2022 garden tour. So last year, this was literally dirt. We just had the house put in. I bought my house last October. And so last spring and summer was the first year we did the pallet path, I put in grass, I put in all the garden beds. This None of this was here. This was all dirt. <laughs> so this is the second year for the garden. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of things in the garden that have come back from last year, perennials that I put in last year. But we've got lots to come this year, and it's always really exciting to see how things grow and change. And so in order to document that, I'm going to be showing you once a month, beginning of the month, how everything changes. Um, I did do a checking your garden for spring video already that showed you exactly what my garden looked like after winter. Everything was scrubbly and overgrown and leaves and, you know, left and forgotten. So, cleaned everything out, mulched everything, pruned everything back, cleaned everything out, and now we are ready to go for spring. But even from that video to this video, you will see, I mean, the lambs here has really filled in. A lot of things that have been pruned back already have so much leaves. Uh, spring and summer bulbs that we planted at the beginning of last month, February, now in March are already growing. So let's get started. Beginning of spring video. I cannot wait to see at the end of the year what this garden looks like. I'm really excited. We're going to start around the corner here. Vinny's already waiting for us. All right, y'all, so if we are starting right here, we actually have this little dumpster fire area and that we need to clean up. This is just supplies, extra pots and things, and my vegetable garden. So my brother's gonna come over and help me get rid of, we'll use it for other areas, but all of the old potting mix from last year. You can actually see my new cucumber plant right up there. I'm going to be planting some seeds for watermelons this year. So if you watch my how to plant a fruit stock tank video last year, I'm doing a similar version this year, but not identical. So I'll be planting that soon. Everything over here, this side, is actually coming back really well. So we live in Alabama which means my garden is quite warm most of the time. So you can see my rows and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six cone flowers. So last year I had um, pink salvia all throughout this area. I'm not sure what type they are. My mom actually got them from a fellow on Facebook marketplace. They grew like three, four feet tall. They were beautiful. But I planted these coneflowers in around the pink salvia when they were really little last year. They're beautifully, they're getting huge this year. Like these three are kind of in weird places. I probably need to redistribute them. So I think this year, instead of the pink salvia, we might put a few little shorter annuals up front and let the gara and the coneflowers really take over. But then you will start to see here, we have some Angelonia. And this Angelonia, this was the blue-faced Angelonia. This was the purple. It's a shorter variety. The blue face is a taller variety. It's supposed to be an annual, except in warmer climates, it can come back as a perennial. And I mean, this is all new growth. So we're going to see what it does. The blue face does seem to be coming back way better than the purple. Although the purple, I mean, that's definitely growth. So, you know, this is, that was a purple one. One, two, three, four, not quite as good. So we'll just see. But 
that is this side. If we come across the path real quick, we have our new garden bed that we just did last year when we put in this path. So right around the tree, all I've planted in here, I don't have irrigation set up yet in this bed, is these purple sensation alliums. So they're doing really well. I planted them as bulbs. You probably saw that in my spring bulb video, but they are doing beautifully. Cross the way. Another addition from my spring bulb video, and these are actually summer bulbs, are my glads. Now, glads are summer bulbs, like I just said, and they only bloom once. So typically people will plant them in succession. I just replaced the bird feeder with these wind chimes, and I kind of love it. So they're probably a little noisy for this video, but I will plant some more glads probably in a week or two. You can plant them every two weeks, so they're constantly blooming, but I don't really want them that prolific, but we'll do another succession planting here in another week or two, so we at least have them a few times throughout the summer. This is one of my mums from last year that I planted, the lamb's ear, and you saw in my spring cleanup video how those looked after I took all those old leaves out. They look beautiful even a couple weeks later. They're filling in already. Only two of them kind of aren't doing so hot, and I will point those out, but they're kind of dying back in the middle, and the outsides look fine. So I came in a couple days ago and just cut that dead out, and it th they'll regrow eventually. My hydrangea is looking great. So this is a... I don't remember what type of hydrangea, but it is a full bloomed hydrangea, kind of like endless summer. And it was really struggling last year. It only bloomed once straight from the nursery. The rest of the summer, I had to water it twice a day because the heat was just getting to it. And this year, you'll see I have two of this specific plant. They're twins. The other one is down more in shade. The second one in the shade bloomed continuously all last summer and it is significantly smaller than this one this year so then you can see I do have a few foxglove I love foxglove we had a horrible storm last night so I staked them up with some lantern holders we will be planting annuals all throughout here as well as the as it gets warmer huh bitty but it's still March, so we have to wait until at least April, middle of April, to plant annuals. Um, got our snapdragons. They did bloom a little straight from the, the store, and then I cut back those blooms. And you can see snapdragons grow on one stem. If you pinch them back, they will send out multiple shoots. So coming back, you're seeing multiple shoots. They should get bushier. But this is one of the lambs here that's decided it, it did not like being worked on. You can see in the middle there where it's trying to die out. But at, for as much as it's dying out in the middle here, there's plenty of still good green growth and leaves. So midsummer, it should be, it should look beautiful. I mean, when you think back to it, all of these lambs here, I put in the ground last year. So this is their second season. I bought all of them in half gallon cans and separated them. And so each plant was like a quart size when I planted it last year. I bought 18 of them, separated them. So 32 quart sizes and they're really covering good ground. If you don't want lambs over here to take over, don't plant it. But I want it to really act as a ground cover and take up a lot of space. And it's, I mean, it's doing that. That's what it does. So on this side of the garden, we have quite a few things. But real quick before we get to that, my lawn is growing in. I do need to reseed it for spring. But look at all my little sweet peas. So there's way too many in here and they will grow up on this trellis, but my mom wants some. So I planted them inside and then I transplanted them in here a few weeks ago. 
they will start to grow up on this trellis here, but a bunch of the middle ones I'm going to transplant over to mom's house. So they won't be nearly as overcrowded as they are here, but they're doing great. Hi, huh, Betty, Betty. And then we will, I suppose in a minute, go up on the porch. I'll give you a, a little tour of what's up there, but for now, let's go down this way. So, of course, we have a few lambs here, here and then my lace cap hydrangea, which of my three hydrangeas did the best last year and is doing the best this year. It is the biggest. I'm really excited to see how it blooms this year because it is leafing out like crazy. Here we have another version of the pink purple salvia. This is a perennial type as opposed to the pink type that I had over there. This comes back year after year, whereas the pink just reseeds itself. We also have the blue salvia. Oh, look, there's even a little, little tiny purple flower there, or blue flower. These are just the standard blues, whereas this is the purple that looks pink. And then like two crepe myrtle trees are starting to leaf out. For some reason, this tree grew like crazy last year, but never bloomed. That tree bloomed. Biddy, do you know why? She doesn't. She has no clue. All right. You can see I have those glads coming up here and here. These are irises. And so I have dotted those all throughout the back of the beds since they get really tall and built in between my pretty purple bushes that I can't remember the name of and my roses. So I have whole layers of height. Now here is what's frustrating. I have six of these purple bushes and six of the roses, but because my yard gets sun down here and a lot more shade down there under those trees, here's a purple bush. There's another one right down there. You can hardly see because they're just not doing well. These two are doing well. The rest are not. And so I could take them out, um, put something else in down there. I've thought about putting in the verbena plants or bushes because they color up really well and show up nicely. But I believe these only get two to four feet high, which is why I put them around the steps. And these get more like six feet high, which is why I put them in the very back layer of this garden. So I'm going to try fertilizing the four down there a lot more this season and see if that helps. If it doesn't, we may have to eventually call that an experiment that didn't work and move those four somewhere that gets more sun. Cause they're not loving their spots, but back to down here, we have three more cone flowers. And this year I have, um, transplanted just a, a little few offshoots from my larger lamb's ear up front and trying to fill in the top front of the beds as well. I want plenty of spaces for annuals and flowers, but I don't just want lamb's ear at the back of the bed and none at the front. So we are trying to make it a little more consistent. We've got three or four spots where I've got these snapdragons. I will probably have to replace those around July because they are more cold weather plants, but I like them. I got them for really cheap. They looked really pretty a week or two ago and then I had to cut all the blooms off and they'll keep growing until July. This lambs there is the other one that decided, and this one's way more evident. This was all a plant and then right through here is where it died out can kind of see that dead part right there where I came in and cut it out but you know you can see growth 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 so it's not the plant is not dead for some reason just one or two parts of it died and and it'll come back it is definitely not you know it's not dead for good it, it it'll be fine after a couple couple months of growth these lilies I planted last year as opposed to um let me find one. These. These I planted at the beginning of spring. 
these I planted last year. So you can see the difference in the growth. These should actually bloom this year, which will be fun. And then these are lilies as well, but a different type of lilies. So also starting to see like this purple bush. I'll ask my mom what the name of that is, but if you know it, put it down below. This purple bush is not terrible, but it, it's not nearly as pretty as these two. So we're really just rocking a lot more of the same. We do have some more sweet peas growing around the bird bath here, but we haven't put in anything this year. So the rest of the garden is pretty much more of the same. The roses this year is having the same problem last year where these three were significantly smaller than these three. And this season, these three are doing better, although I am going to fertilize them, but purple bush, purple bush. Come look at this one. This is just sad. I mean, I might just have to dig him up and move him now because I don't know that he'll even make it to next season, but he's just getting no love over here. My hibiscus is coming back. This is the other hydrangea that I said that's a twin. The one over in front of the stairs. And you can see, like this one has a lot more leaves. It likes its spot, but it is significantly smaller. Then we have a daylily here. We have a few irises and glads that are still coming up. My lupin is looking pretty good today but those blooms are about done i'll be nice when it blooms again but i just planted him lupins don't always like their spot for the first year so i've been really babying him and hopefully next year he'll be beautiful but look all around this tree my begonias are coming back which they are not typically a perennial oh bitty bitty Irises that I planted at the beginning of spring. Glads. Glads. Or those are irises. Glads. Snapdragons. This is a little group of salvia. But they're doing well. We've got some mums in here. So I've got, I had planted three mums here from my porch. And over in front of the stairs, I planted two mums. And of course, Two of these mums made it, this one did not. And one of the mums that I planted over there made it and the other one did not. So I'm gonna have to dig that one up and move them over here cause it's just silly. But for March, for the beginning of spring, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of green in my garden. And since this is only the second year that my garden even exists, I am very happy with it. I am going to be trying some other things this year, but I'm going to really, really try to give you guys a look at least once a month at the change and how things are doing and how things evolve over the season. I really enjoy it when people do that. And I really enjoy a realistic look at things. So here's my porch. This planter is always one of my favorites. It's actually for drinks, but I don't care. So I planted it with pansies and snapdragons and the snapdragons are pink and you can see they're in there, but they, uh, they all bloomed. I cut them back. They'll bloom again soon. This is coming back You can see the green here, but it was it overwintered and I just cut it back and it will drape over. I believe let's, homestead verbena perhaps and then I actually have a fern right here that's coming back that looked like it almost had completely died so I cut it back to the ground but I'm not quite sure why there's this dent in here to me it looks like a bird keeps sitting there or something we'll see but right now as much as I love this it just looks like a riot of pansies which or not pansies, violas. I suppose it could be worse. Did just plant this little guy in this little pot. And 
I'm not sure if he's going to live here or here. I'd wanted him to live right here, but you can see this is shadier. He needs more sun. And then up on the porch, we have my little dahlia. Dahlias are actually one of my favorite flowers, but I don't have room for a the dinner plate dahlias. I might try to put in some raised beds for those eventually. But for now, I'm just going to try this one in a pot because I tried a few of these out in the landscape last year. They all died. None of them lived. My research has said that in my area in Alabama, it's just too hot for them. They need to be under a little bit more shade, a little bit more protected with more well-draining soil and babied a bit more. So we're going to try them in a pot. I've got my strawberry plant which um last year my strawberries in my stock tank garden was way too many ants so we are going to try this and i might make another hanger for it as well hi bitty bitty i just want to cruise and i got these guys in close to maya so i'm kind of obsessed with them this is what the pink snapdragons look like. This one's still in bloom, maybe because it's shady. And you can see we had some wind last night. So my little annuals that I'm babying until the 1st of April, 15th of April, somewhere in there where I can plant them. And my cucumber plants are all, all falling over from the storm. Oh, my little cucumber is wilty. Need to go water him. All right, well, I guess that's what I'm doing today. I really want these to live. And I have one more plant here. I'm going to put a few more over here as well. Especially since eventually this little cucumber plant will be growing on one of those trellis and it grows all the way up the porch. And this entire area is covered in cucumber vines, which is really fun because I can come out here and harvest cucumbers straight from the porch. But these all need a really good drink. So I'm going to go grab my water. Alright y'all. That is it for the end of our March 2022. We already in tour, which is good. Because sounds like the helicopters are out now. Which is going to get very loud and very quick. I did go ahead and give all of the little plants on the porch a drink. They look better already. It is amazing how quickly a little water can make a plant look so much better. Whenever I'm starting to get like a headache, that makes me think I should go get some water. And sure enough, water is always the answer. Either way, going off on a tangent. I hope you liked this video. If you did, let me know down below what was your favorite part of the entire garden. I think for March, my favorite part is all of the pretty spring bulbs. I've never had the chance to plant bulbs before, so this has been a really fun new experience for me, and I did not expect them to be so quick. So, like, literally, my brother came over to help me with the project one day. We walked right down this path. No bulbs. The next day, he came back to finish the project. We walked down the path, and the alliums were, like, an inch and a half above the surface since we had a rainstorm the night before. He was like, are those weeds? Those were not there yesterday. It's very exciting. So, that is the, your favorite part of the garden. Let me know. But it'll be very exciting follow this every month. I always like to see how a garden looks from start to finish, but especially it's amazing to see how much growth you can have in a season. Biddy loves it. Biddy just likes to be out here in the fresh air. To be fair, that's one of my favorite parts about gardening. There is something very therapeutic about just being outside in the sun and the dirt. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, I will see you next month. Until then, bye. Come on, baby. Go inside.